Jennifer Kite even laughed at that one. Angie Bowie is a lot more than David Bowie's ex-wife. She, she's in fact was the creator. She's in fact was. She was in fact. She was in fact the creator of the Bowie image. Uh, she just finished her 10-year gag following a separation from David Bowie. Let's meet her now, live by satellite from Londonium, Angie Bowie. Hi, Angie, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Very well, thanks. This is the first time you've spoken to Australia, isn't it? I think it is. It's very exciting. Hello, everyone. Um, now, you were, you're very well known as the, uh, the wife of David Bowie, but were you, in fact, the creator, or partly the creator of the Bowie image, Ziggy Stardust and that total look? Um, I contributed. It was a, you know, a team effort, and it emanated from what David wanted, wanted to project. So, yes, I was, you know, partly responsible, but I would not take um, full credit. That mm. would not be correct. Yeah. How did you first meet David? Um, a, fr a mutual friend who was the head of A&R at Mercury Records in London uh, was a friend of David's, and he knew that David had broken up with his girlfriend, and he thought that I would be able to uh, cheer him up. Make him feel better. And did you cheer him up? I think so. <laughs> yeah, we stayed plenty busy for a long time, so yes, he felt better. What was your first impression of David when you first saw him? Uh, the first thing that struck me was we went to a place called the Speakeasy, uh, which was a club that had a lot of music business people at it. And I was very impressed with the way that they deferred to David with so much respect. It made me want very much to hear all of the music and to understand why he was so well respected as a songwriter. Because he was 23. He was like a real young kid, you know, and they treated him very respectfully. And what was your first impression of his music? I thought it was fabulous. I really did. I thought it was just... I love the melodies. I think he's got a really special voice with a great timbre to it. And that's something that I really, Boy George, too. You know, there's some people that have those real distinctive quality voices. And the way the melodies were constructed and the lyrics and the way he used his voice was fabulous. Now, you've made some recent allegations, uh, Angie, about uh, David and Mick being... Well, there are no allegations. Hey, hold on, Steve. <laughs> well, wh what are they? Tell me the story. Not, you tell me. Tell me the story. I'll, I'll be happy to. Yeah. I'll be happy to tell you the story. I came back from the airport to my house in Oakley Street, and I was just coming in, you know, with the suitcases and everything. And my assistant Daniela was in the kitchen, and she said, "Oh, there's someone sleeping in your room." And I said, "Oh, okay." I said, "I'll take the bags up, and you know, put the kettle on." So I went upstairs, and David was asleep, and Mick was asleep. Obviously, they'd been out, come home, fallen over the night before. That's all I ever said. Right. So it was nothing to do with allegations. Oh, they, it they, was a well. They, they, they weren't. Uh, was there any reason to suspect that they were doing anything more than falling over together? <laughs> well, to be quite honest with you, um, the person that that has, I guess, witnessed all of that is not me. And it's a girl called Ava Cherry, who was David's girlfriend at the time. And what does she she's say? The, she, I don't know. I, didn't, I, I looked at the newspaper article where they'd interviewed her, and I thought, uh oh, okay, well, I guess Ava's got the gin on it. I did not witness, uh, you know, that particular affair. Did you witness <laughs> any affair? <laughs> um, yeah, ongoing. Many affairs. <laughs> Lots of affairs. With, between David and various people? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and do you have any reason to believe... Draw me that? out, Steve. Draw me out, boy. <laughs> this is... <laughs> the, uh, I just want to get to the bottom, if you'll forgive the expression of the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, do you want to get to the bottom? I've read your press, Steve. I know all about you, baby. Now, I, I've never been caught in bed with anybody, and well, not recently. I never said you had. I was just talking about your general demeanor. Oh, thanks, Angie. Now, Angie, well, did they or did they not do it? Angie... That's not... I wasn't there, so I can't answer that question. You've been trained as a lawyer. You know perfectly well that I'm not in a position to answer that. <laughs>
That's a, uh, so that's a no. You got it. No, they did not do it. Okay. Um, now, you're uh, living in uh, Atlanta at the moment? Uh-huh. What are you doing over there? Uh, my daughter's at school there, and I wanted to move to um, a city that was a real media hub and a travel hub so that it was convenient for me to work because I work all over the world. In fact, I think I'm going to be in Australia soon. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, Angie. Um, oh, well, I'll get to meet you live, I hope. Now, Angie, you're working on a couple of books at the moment, is that correct? Yeah, we're going to do, um, my autobiography is going to be released, and there's another book that I'm working on with G uh, two gentlemen, Mark Vigo and Lee Black Childers, which is like an overview and a look back. It's called Glitterati, and it's about the 70s in photographs and prose and poetry and interviews, just with the, all of the people, you know, who aren't dead, um, <laughs> that are still alive to talk about it. <laughs> and, um... That should, be, that should be real interesting. I've been working on that one for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And television. You've got something on television coming up. Tell us about that. Yes, I'm going to be doing a television series out of England. Maybe we'll have a hookup. How would that work, Steve? Oh, well. Then we could be guests, we could be guests on each other's shows. Well, I'd be I'd be more than delighted to do that. Now, just just I want to just pursue this. Apparently, I read in the papers that you're thinking of uh, going David for five million dollars. Um, I don't have any idea what the figures are. Um, my lawyer Paul Carcidi knows, and Henry Brandman here in London. They, I, from what I understand, that is a starting figure for what is owed. But I don't really, you know what I mean. I've just been doing what my job is, and they've been doing theirs. I don't know how much it what, what's will the, be. What's the uh, money owed for, Angie? Uh, it's owed for establishing residency in Switzerland and establishing his tax basis in Switzerland. And those two things were never dealt with in the property settlement. But unfortunately, in the property settlement, we found later that there was non-disclosure of assets and fraud and conspiracy to defraud me of the money that was owed to me because I worked at Mainman for a long time with David and with all of the other acts that we had and basically I was swindled, screwed. <laughs> David's obviously bought the satellite. <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, see you there.